Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. Hello, everyone. This week in Global Pulse, we are looking at a very interesting topic. It is a topic that William Shakespeare tackled when he asked in Romeo and Juliet, what's in a name? Well, apparently a lot. So in the context of business, one of the things that we try to build when we teach companies this in marketing is you have to build a brand. And a brand essentially is your name in the marketplace. Now you might be wondering, well, brand, and I've also heard the term logo, what's the difference? Well, the logo is the visual elements when we think of the images, the text, and the shape that help represent the brand. And so it's not unusual to think of a brand name and has a certain image with it. And of course, just to make things even more complicated, you're probably wondering, well, I've also heard about this idea of a slogan. How does that factor in? Well, a slogan is a memorable phrase that is used to underscore a certain product attribute or benefit to the customer. And therefore, what it does, it captures the purpose of your brand and the personality of your brand. So when we put it all together, we realize that the slogan can be very helpful in a space where we're bombarded constantly with ads and commercials again and again. And so what we have found that there are some great slogans out there that are very useful, like, Melts in your mouth, not in your hand. And already you're thinking Eminem's. What a great thing to talk about in terms of your brand personality. Just do it, which really captures the soul and essence of Nike. Whether you're a pro or you're an amateur, just do it. Get out there and make it happen. And then of course, think of Apple. Apple has gone out of its way to be unconventional. So think different became the slogan for their campaign. And we think of their technology as leading the pack and doing things that are quite innovative. And then of course, even in our world, and we have to all be honest, we've swung by the point a couple of times, McDonald's. Mm -mm 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 -mm, I'm loving it. And so we find that these slogans can be very powerful. Now, the reason I'm raising this point on Global Pulse is that Miller High Life found itself in some hot water. They have a slogan, which is part of the slogan as well as in some sense, the logo, the champagne of beers. And somehow their product ended up in Belgium en route to Germany, and the authorities there said this is an absolute no-no because the French have been very clear about this, that you cannot have the word champagne appear anywhere because it's against the laws of the land. And of course, Miller Life said, well, look, we know the rules and we didn't put our product in there. We don't know how our product got there, but it's just one of those things. We don't have to engage in a mea culpa because in some sense they hadn't done anything wrong. However, when we look at this, we realize that outside the United States, there are certain bodies that carry real weight. And one is the EU IPO. And this organization is tasked with saying, we're gonna police and handle all of these things in terms of the brands and slogans. And one of the things that's intriguing when we think about this notion of what is a viable slogan, it's a two-pronged test. First, you gotta make sure your slogan isn't just purely descriptive. If it is, it'll be struck down, you won't be able to register. Also, is it the case that it is distinctive? Because if it's distinctive, it goes through. If it's not distinctive, you won't pass muster. And so one of the things that we discover here in the language that comes from the EU IPO is they say that for a slogan trademark to work, here's what they're looking for. One, constitutes a play on words and or introduce elements of conceptual intrigue or surprise so that it may be perceived as imaginative, surprising or unexpected and or has some particular originality or resonance and or triggers in the minds of the relevant public a cognitive process or requires an interpretive effort. So you can see that that certainly meets the test of distinctiveness. And so what we find here in this matter is that what happens with the brand and the logo, especially the slogan, is that it has to take on what we call secondary meaning. And so that's the proof, that's the standard. So one of the things that would be argued by the French courts to say that, look, when you use the word champagne by a third party, it has a certain connotation that is assigned to the product that comes from France. And the French, of course, are very proud of their champagne so when it comes to the bubbly, they protect it. And so they would argue that it's gonna create confusion among consumers. How can you go around calling yourself the champagne of beers? That's a no-no, we can't have it. And so the courts do look for that secondary meaning. It applies here in the States as well. 
And it takes a long time to build a brand. It's not easy coming up with a winning logo. And of course, that slogan matters such to a point that it is something worth fighting for. So in the land of IP, when you go into another country, especially if you're doing business with the EU, you have to know the rules of the game. And of course, you always want to be a good corporate citizen. You want to play by the rules. And of course, it happens where we have companies that American companies go abroad and find themselves in a bit of a tangle. And then, of course, the reverse can happen where we have companies from other parts of the world that come to the United States and they can run afoul of our laws dealing with intellectual property. So I know it's a lot to digest this time around, but at the end of the day, there is quite a bit in one's name and we do all we can to protect it. So thank you so much for listening. I'll catch you guys next time.